Hmm. Greetings, family. It's been a minute. I have so missed you all. Um, I've had some interesting things happening. What can I say? Um, I'm going to start with one of the main reasons why you haven't uh, seen a post um, as often as I was doing initially was because I was sick. Like I literally got sick and I did not want to come on Facebook giving false information when I didn't know what was wrong with me, right? Um, in my mind, I've had malaria symptoms. That's the first place my mind went to. And I did not want to scare anyone by giving those symptoms and having people be like, oh my God, you go to Africa, you get diseases, da da da. Because we know if you change in from one climate to another, no matter where you go in the world, it is likely that your system will have some sort of adjustment period. And for me, my first couple of weeks were fine. But guess what? It usually takes seven or 14 days before you know whether you are really adjusted or not, right? So I'm going to tell you about my symptoms because what I found interesting was that after I talked about my symptoms, people who stepped forward to assist me were like, you know, I've been hearing about quite a few people with these symptoms. And I thought to myself, if only we let each other know what those symptoms were, then you don't have to be as scared or you know how to proceed or you put things in place. So as y'all know, when it was time for me to leave the States, I just packed up what I thought was important. I kind of got in panic mode and I had already shipped a lot of my vitamins, my supplements and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't necessarily pack anything in my bag. And I have vitamins in the weekly thing. I mean, all kind of, you know, real old lady style stuff, but I sure didn't pack that stuff. I was too busy just trying to get out of Dodge. So tell y'all about my symptoms. I just happened to, you know, I felt fine going to bed the night before. But when I woke up that morning, when I tell y'all, my head was pounding. Boom, boom. I've never had a pounding like that. I hear people complain about migraines, headaches. I was like, okay, well, maybe this is like a headache. So when I went to get up out of bed and I felt that pounding, I said, no, uh-uh, let me just lay here. And I laid back down and I just went to sleep. I slept it off. When I got up, I still felt like my equilibrium was a little off. My head was pounding. I said, you know what? I just need to rest. Maybe I was out in the rain. You know, that, that was like around the time when I did that video about uh, Saracunda Market, the day after the big rainstorm and the day before the holiday. And I said, you know what? Maybe I did too much being in the sun. Like maybe this is some version of sunstroke or something. I don't know but I knew I needed to rest. Oh, and you know what? Before we talk about the headache, I don't know if y'all recall, but I had been burnt here and my back and I had developed like a, a fine, fine rash. It was almost like, like little miniature blisters. Um, and it was painful. Like when I would go in the sun, I would feel the heat start to make the area very sensitive. And I said, okay, this is one of those things where this area is not really exposed a lot. So now that the sun is getting it, it's very sensitive. So initially I tried like, you know, cocoa butter, shea butter. And then I realized that I needed to treat the rash. So I started getting some fresh aloe. I cut the ends, the pointy parts and the bottom part off the aloe. I took out the gel or I used the leaf and I rubbed it on that area to dry it out first. Like after I had showered, I would put the aloe gel on there. And then when it dried, that's when I would put my cocoa butter, my shea butter on top of that. Um, and it helped. And I just did that for about two or three days and it stopped. So now we move on to, I'm out in the sun that day at the Saracunda market and I'm thirsty. Like I feel this thirstiness come over me. I'm talking just a dry, can't quench my thirst with water. So I start buying ices. Don't do that. Don't, don't do what I did. I wasn't even thinking the ICs are made with local water. People are probably not boiling the water when they're making these ICs because you don't need hot water to make ICs. So they make the ICs and they're delicious, right? 
They have uh, the Wojo, which is like hibiscus or a sorrel, I see. They have one that's made out of, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like a sour type fruit that has a seed and they make one from that. Um, and they also have one made from the Bao Bao, which is made with milk. And I was so dry that I just kept, I had like six of those ices. And at no point did I think that was abnormal. I was just thinking, I'm really thirsty. It's hot. These are quenching my thirst. Mind you, I wasn't even buying them from the same people. Every couple of little kilometers that I walked, I was buying these ices from just local people with a cooler. I know y'all. I know. I can hear everybody scold to me. But that's not where my mind was at the time. I was just going to town on them things, trying to quench my thirst. So it could have been that. So nevertheless, that morning, we go back to the headache. I woke up. My head was pounding. I laid down. I slept it off. The next day, I start to notice that I have chills. Like I'm cold. I'm sitting in the sun and I'm feeling chills. And then it would stop. And then I'm feeling chills. And then it would stop. And then a few hours would go by and I'd be fine. And then it would come back again. So now I'm thinking malaria because I heard malaria moves like a roller coaster. Like every few hours, it kind of moves through your system. So I'm like, I know I got bit a few times. I did not get the malaria vaccine. Um, and I wasn't necessarily using a whole lot of mosquito wipes and all that. My stuff didn't come yet. Like I said, I didn't pack it. So I'm thinking malaria. So I said, you know what? Today is like Tuesday, Wednesday. If I'm still feeling like this, when Monday comes, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the clinic. So, so now we got, I had the heat rash, which I thought was a heat rash. It could have been an allergic reaction. I had the headache. I had the chills and hot flashes. Now y'all know we got the menopause thing going. So we got a whole lot going on right now, right? Mind you, I don't have underlying medical issues, so I wasn't really concerned about my health. Then I had um, a little nausea. I didn't have an appetite, and I was getting this chalky, pasty taste in my mouth. Like, I couldn't, it was like I had a box of chalk in my mouth. Like, I literally could not taste anything. Um, nothing really had a flavor. And when I would take like maybe a bite of a mango, I was full. I just, I couldn't eat. Wasn't vomiting, nothing like that, but my stomach had like a queasiness to it. So now I'm not, I'm not eating anything. And I'm just kind of like, I don't feel right. Like I don't feel right. And I just stayed in bed. Like I literally stayed in bed. I might've been on clubhouse listening to stuff, but I wasn't active. I wasn't posting anything. I just did not, I wasn't even up to doing a video because I thought I don't want to do a video and not, and be given my symptoms and have people worried. You know, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Um, so I just kind of wrote it out and, you know, I'm not a person that gets sick. So if, when I do get sick, I, I'm paying attention to all of the symptoms and that's how it was. I was paying attention. Um, and then finally, you know, Sunday rolled around and I was still having a little bit of chills. That paciness would not go away, but I was feeling a little better. But I said, I'm going to the clinic. So I went to the clinic, y'all. I went to a clinic around the turntable area in Gambia called um, Medicare. And when I tell you this, this clinic was on point, it was impressive. You know, we hear different things, but I wanted to share with y'all how the clinic is set up. So they have, this is all the paperwork that I came home with from the clinic, right? They, uh, when you first come in, they have you pay an intake fee, right? So I have my little intake fee receipt and I believe, oh, it's my receipt, y'all. Here it is right here. Here's my receipt for my intake. If y'all could see it. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to show y'all the numbers. Here's the numbers right here. You see the numbers? 300 Delasi. 100 Delasi and um, what's this one say? The total is 400 Delasi, right? So this is, uh, I saw, a, I had a consult and then registration. Usually when you walk in, they have you go to the uh, intake first. So you go to that window and the woman tells you, you have to pay this intake fee of $400. When you walk away from them, I'm sorry, let me go back. 
you go to, it's two people sitting next to each other. There's a woman on the right, a man on the left. You go to the woman on the right. She tells you, you have to pay an intake, like a process fee, processing fee to see the doctor and you get a consultation. So they charge you for that upfront, 300 Lalasi, 100 Lalasi. So if y'all recall, the Delasi is 100 Delasi equal 5,000. I'm, I'm sorry, 100 US equal 5,000 Delasi. So if I'm telling y'all that I paid 400 Delasi for an intake, then you know I paid less than, what, $5 for intake, right? Because 400 Delasi is about... Seven dollars, six dollars, something like that. So it, less than ten dollars for intake. So I did the intake. So when I leave them, I wait in the area. They have like chairs and little sections. It's just a small waiting area, and they have these doors around you. And all of the doors have a sign over them. Some of them say lab. Some say emergency room. Some say different things. So I was sent to go over to where the doctor was next to the doctor's room his door is closed there's also the pharmacy like right behind you so i was sent to go to the doctor for a consultation so i went in to see the doctor i told him my symptoms i told him what was going on with me and he was like okay he said i'll tell you what we're gonna do full blood work on you he asked me if i had my uh, malaria that va um vaccine i told him no he asked me if i had the covid vaccine i told him i did not um and he just was, he just listened. He didn't say anything. Um, he took some notes and he told me, I want you to get a full blood workup and blood sugar workup. I said, okay. So now he gives me a paper and I have to go um, back to these people where you pay, right? So I go back to them with the paper with his recommendations on it. And now I have to pay, here's what I paid there. This was separate, 650 Delasi, 100 Delasi. Um, so it was a full blood count differential, $650. And then it says machine in parentheses. And then they have a random blood sugar for 100 Delasi. So that comes to a total of 750 Delasi, right? So again, we still in that what, 10, 15, you know, under $20 range now, right? So I paid that and I go over to the lab and there's people just sitting by the lab waiting to go in. So you kind of assume you're next because you come behind whoever's last. So I did that. I go into the lab. They took one vial of blood from me um, and I'm a slow bleeder. So I always turn my head because by the time they pierce it, it takes a while for the tube to fill. So they did that. Um, the lady was very pleasant. They did not have all the stuff we had have at home. They gave me, they had, someone was actually sitting there breaking the cotton balls, like breaking the cotton patches into little tiny balls so that they weren't wasted. And I paid attention to that because those are things we take for granted in this days. You know, they put a big old band, a uh, gauze pad on there. They might even stretch some of that adhesive tape. They did not have the adhesive tape. They did not have band-aids. They just had the cotton ball. They put the cotton ball on the spot and send you on your way. So now I go back out to wait for my results. Um, and they come back out and they told me I had to go back to see the doctor after. I waited once the results came. I walked back into now it gets confusing because you can't tell who is going through the same process that I just went through or who just walked in. So I'm like, they got to do better with that process. They should have had some sort of numbers for you to pull different colors for the lab, different colors for the emergency room, different color for consultation, first consultation, different color for the second consultation. That would cut the confusion. So... I go back in to see the doctor and he simply tells me that, you know, um, he's like, it's a virus. You got like a little flu. You got a little flu. It's a new environment for you. You need to take a multivitamin. And he gave me something that uh, he prescribed something that was like Alka-Seltzer Plus with codeine. Honey, I don't do well with like codeine and any heavy medications because I'm not a medication person. But when I take it, you better believe I get really good sleep. 
So now I have to leave him and go to the lab. So I have another bill. Um, I don't know if he gave me a separate receipt for the lab, but I remember that was a little more expensive, right? Because now, you know, you're paying for like what would be medication, vitamins, stuff in the States that we might pay. I think this was, this might be comparable to the prices in the States. Think about a bottle of multivitamins as well as a, a box of, uh, you know, Alka-Seltzer that you drop in the water and it does a little fizzle thing and you have to drink that. I was told to take that three times a day with the multivitamin daily. And that's what I've been doing. And I noticed after I started to have a little mucus in my head, I wasn't really blowing my nose or anything, but, um, you know, the virus is just getting out of my body. I just started getting my sense of taste back and more of an appetite now, but I had to go old school. Like I had to find, um, I remember someone calling me and saying, you know, we had, there was a party and he's like, where were you? Like you always there dancing. Y'all know I'm a house head. I love my house music. But I was like, um, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get out of bed that night. Like I literally wasn't feeling well and I didn't think it was a good idea to be going around people and I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, so I, I shut it down. I stayed in. So I was sorry I missed the sister's birthday party from the UK, but everybody made sure I got that invitation because they know I like to go and have a good time, you know. Um, so the one sister who has the art gallery, Zaya, called me and she's like, we didn't see you last night. What's up? I was like, Zaya, I'm not well. Like, I just really don't feel good. And she was like, what do you need? What's going on? I told her my symptoms. And she said she's heard about a few people with these symptoms. And I told her, well, I need, it's like, I, I think I need a piece of chicken. Cause you know, I'm old school. I do chicken broth. I do fish tea, Caribbean style. That's what I grew up more when people were sick. You had a big old bowl of soup. So Zaya was like, what you need? Homegirl came with the quickness. She bought me a half a chicken. She bought me some fries. She bought some um, onions, some garlic for me, some black pepper, some turmeric. And was like, you know, here, like, here's what you need, you know, whatever you need. And some orange juice. I asked her for orange juice because I'll do orange juice with a pinch of um, uh, cayenne pepper. Like, that's an old military remedy, right? So, um, you know, she came and visited with me to make sure I was okay. Um, and when she left, I put together my soup. I took a pinch of it and sent it to her let her know I did make my broth. And I was able to sip on that and keep it down, right? I didn't even really eat the chicken. I just kind of boiled it for the broth. Um, and, and it helped, y'all. It helped. Like, that was the thing that really got me to go. So I wanted to share that with y'all to let y'all know that you will get sick. You will get sick. You can try to overdose on your medications before you come, like overdose on your vitamins and stuff. And I thought I was doing that, but I kind of slacked off once I got here. Um, wasn't really eating because I didn't have much of an appetite, but I was drinking a lot of water. Thank goodness. Um, and I'm still drinking my water. I still sip constantly. I always keep water with me. Um, I only drink bottled water though. Like I don't drink water from the tap and I'm being conscious of getting things that are come that might be washed with tap water or cooked with tap water. Like I'm only using bottled water. So I'm thinking I'm going to be buying a water filter system. I do have some water filters coming, but I'm going to buy a system for my place. Um, I'm in my new place. This is the bed that I had built. I had a bamboo canopy bed built that I designed. Um, and once it's, uh, I get my shares over my bed and all that kind of stuff, I will share that with y'all. I'm going to do a little tour of the apartment on a good day. So you can see where I'm living, the ocean view, um, I shared parts of it with some of you. Some of you have had a personal tour. We've done that, um, but I'm, I'm going to share it with the rest of the family soon. And um, I just wanted to let y'all know I didn't forget about you, that I am okay. I'm much better now. And that is why I was absent, right? I wasn't well. I was down for a good four or five days. And I wanted to be sure that I came on and gave positive energy and wasn't just randomly reporting like, oh, I'm sick, I'm dying in Africa type thing, because that's not the case. You know, I had my first bout. I don't even remember ever having the flu, quite honestly. So this was my first bout with it coming here. And I just wanted to let y'all know you will survive. You will survive it. Um, and again, I remember one night, like a Friday night when I wasn't feeling well, my son just happened to call me. He usually texts me 
send me little messages, but he called me and was like, mommy, um, you good? I was like, you know, I'm sick. I was like, I think I got malaria. He was like, what? Because he thought he got bit when we were on the continent and had a little bout where he had a headache. He wasn't feeling well, but it probably was just a little flu. But I had people in place to take care of him. They gave him immune boosters. They gave him malaria pills. Um, and I forgot to mention, I even went and bought some uh, malaria tablets, uh, some quinine tablets, and I was taking those tablets before I went to the clinic. So I did some preventative stuff. But I needed to be sure what my actual diagnosis was before I came on and started telling people. Um, now y'all know the process, right? There are clinics here. They are well-equipped. Um, and they do the best with what they have. And they are efficient. They are efficient. Here's my paperwork, right? They did the blood work. They showed what they did. They have dates. They even had like where they monitored my stuff. You see the up and down. Um, they took my blood pressure asked me if I had any underlying issues. Um, they were thorough. I was very impressed with them. The place was meticulous. When I tell you clean, these sisters get down on their hands and knees with the bleach cloths and they wiping the corners of the floors. They wiping around the pharmacy people. That's a whole nother operation going on in a medical clinic is the sisters that are there cleaning and making sure the conditions are up to par. It was a new clinic. It was a no old rinky dink spot with people laying on the floor. It was nothing like that. It was a great experience. I just wish they had a better system because then people are not feeling well. They start getting a little irritated with each other when people are trying to skip the line or you there trying to get your parents seen and somebody coming in off the street trying to walk into the doctor and you don't went through the whole process and you coming back to see the doctor for the final uh, recommendation. And then that's where the confusion kind of starts because who was sitting where you know, even though they was telling people, don't be sitting in here if you're not seeing a doctor, people were still sitting with their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their parents, you know, a couple of people was there for assistance. So they could do better with that piece. But outside of that, I, I was seeing, I was able to get what I needed. Um, and I think that any of us with reasonable medical issues would be able to get the services that we needed. So we know that we can be taken care of. There are very professional staff here. Um, you know, all praises to the cleaning people because they keep everything in order. They keep it, the hygiene, the aesthetics, everything. It, it was a beautiful place and I hope that they stay well-funded. Um, I plan to make some donations to the hospitals once my shipment gets here because I have a lot of uh, medical uniforms and I wanted to donate those to the hospitals. Um, so I'm just waiting for that to come. But I just wanted to let y'all know what it's like if you are to get sick in the Gambia that you are able to get assistance. Um, don't be afraid by your symptoms. You should try to self-diagnose, but you also need to go get a medical opinion. And I wanted to share that with y'all. I hope that was helpful and blessings. I'm grateful for you all. I'll see you in the next video and episode.